Hello there and welcome to episode 94 of Little Big Knits. My name is Selma and I am coming to you from a snowy Ottawa. Here we are in now what is officially spring and now we're getting the snow. Uh, huge and light flakes. I don't think we're going to get a large quantity of it, but we are getting snow nonetheless, just when it's supposed to be melting. So hello and welcome to this episode. Hello and welcome if you are new or if you are returning. It's very nice to have you here. Thank you for taking time out of your day to spend with me and have some knitting chat. Um, it's really lovely to have you here. And I also just wanted to give a special thank you also to those of you who either like or subscribe or notify, like push the little bell button, or those of you that support uh, the podcast on coffee. So thank you so much uh, for your comments, for your likes, for your support, whether it is financial or not. So thank you so much. It's so lovely to have you here. <clears throat> In June, it will have been seven years since I started the podcast. It's been a seven glorious years. I have enjoyed every single minute of this. And we're at episode 94. So let's see if by June, we could get to episode 100. And then we'd have two, a double whammy, a birthday or a potiversary, as we say, and hitting 100 episodes. It's taken me a while to get there, hasn't it? Yep, it certainly has. Of course, on the show today, we've got works in progress and lovely finished objects and some acquisitions. But I'll also finish the, I'll finish the episode today with a vlog of my trip to Montreal. So I hope you're in for that. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I have two quick announcements to make before we start with the finished object. Uh, and uh, certainly part of the title of this podcast. The perfect blue vest. I'm so happy with it. But anyway, let me get to my announcements first. First, I just wanted to mention that um, I am going to be giving the sweater modification workshop to the Ottawa Knitting Guild. And there are still some spaces left. In fact, I spoke at the Guild uh, last week. Um, they wanted me to talk about um, about my 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 podcast essentially and so I talked a little bit about my knitting history and podcasting and so forth and um, that was also uh, sort of leading up to the workshop that is coming in April it's the weekend of April 13th and 14th and there are still some spots available so if you are you know in the area and would like to come that weekend you can go to the link below to the Ottawa Knitting Guild and it'll take you to the Ottawa Knitting Guild site. The workshop is open. Uh, it was only for members, but now uh, that members have had a chance to sign up, they're opening it up to the public. So if you would like to come, if you're in the Ottawa area or not too far away and you'd like to come for that weekend um, and hang out, the sweater modification workshop is the same workshop that I gave in New Mexico last year. And it is essentially uh, about um, different things you can do to modify a sweater. We're talking primarily about top-down sweaters. So we talk about the different constructions of sweaters, as well as the different things you can do from necks to arms to chest to, to torso. Um, we do, we talk about sweater math. We talk about short rows. Um, it's a six hour workshop over two days. And, uh, yeah, so if you're interested in joining me and having a conversation about this lovely topic that I happen to enjoy talking about a lot, please feel free to check out the link and sign up. The other thing I wanted to mention is that the Knitting New Mexico retreat is happening again this year. It starts on September 1st, which is Labor Day weekend, and it's three nights. It goes from the Sunday to the Wednesday. And I won't be giving the workshop this year. Bristol Ivy will be giving, um, I think she's actually giving more than one workshop in that weekend or those three days. It's not actually a weekend. It starts on the Sunday. And Knitting New Mexico website uh, should be up this weekend. And so the registration will first be open to returning participants. Um, but you can go and look at the information and um, decide if you'd like to join us in September. I will be going as a co-host with my friend Lauren, and I'm really excited about being back in New Mexico and being back at the retreat 
It was such a beautiful, beautiful time that we had together. And uh, I'm really excited to see some of the returning faces as well as hopefully some new faces. So two big announcements there. Both of those will have links below if you want to check it out. All right, let's start talking about what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my third, oh, my, that was just Yoda. My third Stockholm slipover. You may recall that I first made a white one and then I made a pink one. And then I had the idea that I wanted a certain blue. I just wanted a perfect bright light blue and I got it. I got it. I'm so, so excited about this. Um, loved knitting with it. Uh, loved knitting it, making it, I should say. And just, it's just great. So let's talk about the pattern first and then I'll talk about the yarns. This is a pattern by Petite Knit, the Stockholm Slipover. It is a very basic vest and I dare say that it is a really excellent pattern. I have had success with all three of my patterns, uh, all three of my versions. Now I have a tendency to modify things a little bit here and there, generally when, I, when I'm looking at a pattern. <clears throat> so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the modifications that I made. But that's not to say that there's anything wrong with the pattern. It's actually a very well-written pattern. It's got some nice little details and it creates a nice fitting vest. And um, yeah, I just really like it. I am thinking about possibly lengthening it a tiny bit. I haven't quite decided yet, but yeah, it's just lovely. And I'll tell you what I really like about this vest is that I generally choose the size based on the width that it's going to be up here because I want it to fit kind of like an actual vest that you might wear with a jacket, you know, um, and a shirt. I don't want it to be going awkwardly over the shoulders. I just want it to sit really nicely and I find that um, it works really well. When I started knitting this and I was, you start with the back and you knit the back panel, I sort of, measured it against my pink and my white versions, and I realized that it was a little wide, so I actually went down a size. Um, and I just, I really wanted it to fit, you know, nicely along the back uh, and, and, and around the front so that it would just look nice with a shirt. This, as Leanne of the Nitty Stew called, my, this is my uniform. I just love a white shirt with a vest. Um, it's just one of my favorite looks, whether it's with pants, with jeans, with, with a skirt. I just could wear this all the time. It just makes me happy somehow. So this may not be the last Stockholm slipover in my life, um, but I, you know, I wear all of my vests. I love them all. And, and um, yeah, they're really just really fabulous. So I love the fact that it has width here. Um, she tells you how many uh, rows to knit here. So you, she knits, talks about rows. So you should really check your row gauge because what I, what I want from a vest like this, that I don't want it to go too low. So yeah, so I, I think I, I think I did that just the way she said in the pattern with the number of rows. I usually knit a couple of rows less here just to bring this up a little bit and then I cast on those stitches that I didn't uh, increase here I cast them onto this last row her pattern actually has a little bit of a-line shaping and I had not done that with the first two so I did do it with with this one it's it's very very subtle there's just a tiny little bit of it and it's just a really lovely basic vest so I used two beautiful yarns for this. The first one, which is the truly beautiful one, is this. This is what I have left over. And if I don't decide to lengthen the vest a little bit, I will probably make a Sophie scarf out of the rest of this and the mohair. But this is the Juniper Farms um, Finley, and I believe it's the Atmosphere colorway. 
and um, I got it at a Canadian shop, online shop called Artisanthropy, and they had it. I think they may be out of the blue at this point, but um, it, I just thought that looks like the perfect blue. And this is beautiful yarn. It's 56, 50, um, 50 mohair. Uh, okay, let's get this straight. 50% silk, 50% merino, and it's just stunning. I paired it with this concept 50 shades of mohair or 50 mohair shades, <clears throat> which is a 67% um, mohair, 37% polyamid and 3% wool. I hadn't actually looked at the contents last time. I shared this with you, but I had told you that I didn't love this. It's not the nicest mohair, but together, this one that has a bit of more of a cornflower look and this one that's a little bit more on the turquoisey end of things they just paired together and made the blue that i really had in my mind it really worked out well it's exactly what i was looking for so yeah not the nicest mohair um a tiny bit scratchy and just not as lovely as mohair that obviously has silk in it but it was the right color and i didn't want to look anymore so the slight purpliness of this and the very slight, very slight turquoisiness of this together created the blue that I was looking for. So there you go. Um, really, really lovely, really happy to have this. And I have been thinking that it would be nice to have kind of a sweatshirt gray one, but we'll see when I get there. Uh, but for now, this is really great. I'm really enjoying it. And honestly, I wear my white one probably the most so far. I just love that with this shirt. It's sort of cream on white. And I just, I wear that all the time. And I'm actually kind of thinking that perhaps I should buy some more yarn to make another white one because I keep anticipating that one day I'm going to have some detrimental accident <laughs> and I won't be able to fix it. But, and then I'm going to need another white vest. So we'll see. Anyway. Stockholm slipover, really, really lovely. I did have to, because of the high silk content, I realized after, uh, I decided to re-knit the ribbing here. I knit the body on four millimeter needles. I knit the neck with 3.5 millimeter needles. And I also did this with 3.5 millimeter needles. But then I realized it was a little floppy. So I went, I re-knit it. Um, and I went down to 3.25 and that sort of made it sit just perfect. It was a little bit low and it was a little bit floppy. So going down the right number of a needle size helped to bring, bring in the armhole as well. So don't be shy to go down and even more. And I essentially picked up at a rate of three out of four rows and then two out of three rows and then three out of four rows and then two out of three rows. Normally I would pick three out of four rows, but I felt that it made uh, too large a hole. So I picked up a little bit less. So there is flexibility in how you deal with the armhole of a vest. Um, you can pick up a few less stitches. You can go down a, to a smaller needle size and it'll just fit really well. There you go. Finished object number one. Finished object number two are the socks that I was knitting last time. I think I shared with you that I wanted to make socks for my team. And I started with this pair. This is an opal, um, oh, what was it called? It had something to do with princesses and a thousand somethings. I can't remember anymore. I'll have to find it in the last show notes because I've lost the ball band at this point. But this is an opal yarn and um, just a pair of vanilla socks with 60 stitches, a slip stitch heel, a gusset, and a regular toe. Um, so nothing very exciting about them being held on my Bryson sock blockers, I believe those are called. I've had those for years. And um, yeah, <clears throat> knit on 2.25 millimeter needles, just a really standard sock that I love making. It's just a great little vanilla project to carry around with you. 
um, my bag is small enough that like the, the sock bag that I just stick it in my purse or in my knapsack if I'm going to the office. And if I turn out to have a little bit of time at lunchtime, I'll knit then. Or if I'm going to an appointment and I'm waiting, I knit then. Um, and then before you know it, there's a pair of socks. So there you go. That is finished object number two. Not a huge amount to say about that, but that's going to be going into a container of some kind, perhaps a Ziploc bag to await for uh, next Christmas. And then the last thing that I made is a second Giselle hat. This is a beautiful pattern by Camilla Hoyer Adamson, also known as Cami Jo Knits. I made my first one, which you saw a couple of weeks ago or a couple of episodes ago, I believe, um, out of beautiful yarn from Felici Punto that I got in Barcelona and some Lang Mohair Looks Lame, which is a sparkly, sparkly mohair. Um, and I then made one for my friend. Now, interestingly, you are going to see uh, that there is an immediate size difference, but this has grown a lot. I think the alpaca silk content of this yarn has meant that it has really, really grown a lot. Um, it has loosened a lot. And this one seems small and tight. <laughs> um, so I'm a little bit uh, perplexed. Now, I have not blocked this yet because I just finished it this week and I didn't want it to be wet. So I thought I'll wait till after the podcast to block it. The yarn that I used in here is actually double-stranded alpaca, so it's a little bit more dense, um, but I remember that my first one seemed small when I first finished it, and it's not anymore. The alpaca that I used is Silent Valley Alpaca, which is an alpaca farm here in Ontario that my friend had been given, and so she gave it to me, and it was kind of a lace weight because there was about 500 yards in 100 grams. Isn't that hilarious? Grams and yards all together. 100 grams is 457 meters. Um, and I double stranded it uh, with the same size needles as this. So I think it might be slightly more than a DK, but I'm going to wet this and block it later. I didn't think if I wet it and block it that it would be dry because this is a little bit more dense. And I did make this, this exactly the same, pretty much exactly the same length as this one. So I think that it will also stretch. So I'm going to block this and then I think that it will probably uh, loosen up and with wear it will as well. So this brown mohair is the rest of the Rowan Kid Silk Tweed that I had used for my friend's wisp scarf a uh, couple of episodes, two or three episodes as well. So she's now going to get a hat with the same yarn on the outside. So yeah, it just seems to be a lot smaller, but I'm also aware that this one felt a lot smaller as well. These are just, I don't really consider my colors, but they're definitely her colors. And it's just a really enjoyable hat to make. I could see more in my future. And I actually don't, even though this has a double layer, I don't find it extremely warm because this is very airy and uh, the alpaca silk is also like not really dense. I think that this will probably be a warmer hat because of the double stranded alpaca, but it'll probably depend a little bit on how much it stretches out. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I see one with pink and purple in my in my future, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, really enjoyable knit. I enjoyed making this. This side just kind of knits itself, to be honest. Um, this takes a wee bit longer, but I really enjoy this lace. I, it's so intuitive. It's it's lace that appears on on the Giselle shawl as well, which I had made in the past, and I actually thought I could make uh, probably make. A hat in the Giselle colors uh, that I had used but um, we'll see <clears throat> but yeah second Giselle hat um, it's just so pretty so so pretty so a great hat for the winter and yeah so those are my finished objects for today Right.
let's talk about works in progress. So I actually had to take a break because there were lots of family noises here for a minute. So I thought, I'll just wait, let the family get their breakfast and then they can be on their merry way and I can do my thing. So my first work in progress that I'm gonna show you is from this line of magazine from 2021. I think this was number 11 and it's the Lento sweater. So the Lento sweater is a very, very popular pattern that first featured in this magazine. And I remember thinking, what is the big deal? It is a very simple, basic raglan sweater um, at quite a loose gauge. I think it's 16 or 17. And here it was knit with, um, I believe a single ply fingering and a Surrey alpaca. So that would have filled in the gaps a lot. And it's been made thousands of times. It, it always looks good on people. So I thought I wanted to make something with the knitted in yarn that I had in my stash. I had been considering making um, the in and out raglan by Ivana from the Republic of Me. I ended up changing my mind just because I was feeling a little frazzled and I just didn't have it in me to do the math. <laughs> and I thought, why don't I just make the knitted in? Like, I don't even need to swatch. Um, it's just going to become what it's going to become. So, uh, oops, as my family was making breakfast and making noises, I was actually knitting on it. And I haven't tried this on. I'm going to need to try this on. Isn't this pretty? It's very, very pink. It's like cotton candy. It's going to be my cotton candy sweater. It's just beautiful. I have separated for the sleeves and I seem to have misplaced my other orange barber cable. So I've got, <laughs> I've got a long needle with some stoppers at the end that I had gotten from uh, my friend Lilian in Madrid. Um, so yeah, so I, I do need to try this on, um, but this is a, uh, a cake. This is, knitted in from two or three years ago. This is the Tusinskona colorway, I believe. It was this kind of salmon pink. And I have paired it with a bit of a cooler pink that is the Biche et Biche. Biche et Biche Silk Le Petit Silk Mohair in their very pale pink, I believe it's called. So I'm putting these two together and it's creating this pink curious to see on camera you know I have to say that this pink is definitely predominant this is almost like it's not having much of an effect on the pink of the sweater and yeah not a whole lot to say except that I'm just really enjoying making this I'm just really enjoying the simplicity of it and it's a simple easy pattern the lento is by Yonna Helen she used to be known as Yonna Hietala, but has changed her name to Yonna Helen. And um, it's just a great, simple raglan sweater with a little bit of short row shaping. As you can see, it lifts the back or lowers the front and helps to create a bit of the roundness in the neck. And yeah, just a basic raglan. Nothing very complicated, but it's just great. I suspect that you can probably buy it as a single pattern. And I have to say that this Lento, uh, I mean, this Line magazine has some really lovely patterns in it. There's a cardigan called the Visiting Cardigan that I really like. It's kind of got a mistake rib on it. Um, it's a drop shoulder construction. There's also a sweater version in the cardigan as well. I, I'm not a huge fan of drop shoulders for me, um, especially in a sweater. In a cardigan, I kind of feel like it's a little bit more forgiving, but somehow in a sweater, not a huge fan. I have made some drop shoulder ones, um, but I always feel like they accentuate my arms somehow and make me feel like my arms are really big. So they're not, I'm not a huge fan of them. I think uh, a yoke sweater and a raglan is a better, <laughs> a more flattering construction for me personally. Um, but I would like to make the cardigan version, uh, which is just really lovely. And um, 
This sweater is beautiful as well. The Thea, I think it's called, it would just be a beautiful summer top. Just a stunning, stunning construction. Anyway, I really like this liner. There, there's more in here as well. There's this one, um, the Blue Sipa, I think it's called, which I really like as well. So yeah, anyway, so it's in there and the, the, the project is being held in one of the bags that I made actually last year. I was gonna give this one away, but I had made a little mistake here and this, the fabric hadn't gotten sewn in properly and I just mended it. And I thought, okay, well, I guess I got another bag. So that's work in progress number one. Work in progress number two is being held in this bag. I think I had this one out last time as well from Madrid Knits that my friend Leanne gave me. And this is a test knit for Samantha Guerin. It's called the Springline Tea. It is a fingering weight yarn um, used with a very small needles. Well, it's actually in the pattern, I think it's supposed to be 3.5 or 3.25, but I'm having to use three millimeter needles to get gauge with the yarn that I'm using. And it's just a lovely top-down construction with a little lace detail. And when she had the test call, I was like, I've got the yarn and that would be a lovely thing to make. And the yarn that I'm using is this Dove Blue from Knitting for Olive in their Pure Silk base. And this is a, a burette silk. So it's got, it's which is basically using the leftovers uh, from when the silkworms become butterflies. Um, they're using the leftover of the casings that have kind of left been, been left behind. And so it's not that super silky worm type silk. It's a, and it's considered a more ethical silk. Um, and it's quite lovely. I'm not absolutely loving knitting with it, I'm going to be honest. However, I don't think I chose the best needles because they're a little bit blunt on the tips and I think this would have needed sharper needles. But I don't like changing needles mid-project because I do find that even if it's two metal needles, I may knit slightly differently with them. So I'm just going with it. And I've gotten used to working. Um, it was it was most problematic in the lace section and I've gotten used to it, so it's not a big deal. I need to take a sip of tea, but I also wanted to say that Mr. Stanley Hops, since it is bunny time, wanted to come and say hi. This is from the same potter as my Gertie mug, my chicken mug, uh, brown bunny pottery, um, if you're interested. So I haven't gotten as far on this, but I, it's got a nice uh, testing timeline. It goes until I believe the end of April. Um, and I am just starting the left front. I did the back until the arm hole. And I just started the left front. I'm going to finish that part, do the right front, and then they join. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying making this. Bizarrely, this lace, which is very simple looking, has a slight complexity to it. And it took me most of the back part to finally get into the rhythm of it. It was not as easy to learn as the lace on here, for example. This diamond lace, Super easy, super intuitive. This one took a little bit of time to get used to, but now I've got it, no problem. I'm just going along. I don't have to look at anything. Yeah, so it's a beautiful blue. I'm clearly in my blue phase at the moment. And I think it's just gonna make a lovely, lovely summer top. I may, may, the, I may wear this at um, Knit City Toronto if we're having a warm, weekend then you just never know what the weather's going to be like in may and yeah it's it's a lovely design and i'm really looking forward to having this top i'm enjoying making it 
Um, I'm, I'm enjoying the fabric that the pure silk is making and I thought, hmm, this would be really, really, really lovely um, to make other things with. A lot of people knit this double and I'd be curious to see how that feels as a fabric. I'm definitely going to have quite a bit of the blue left because I think I have seven balls and I can't imagine needing more than four for this top. So <laughs> I may have enough to make something else, either a striped top or um, mixed with another yarn to make a top of some kind. I don't know, but I'll definitely have um, this left over. This has been in my stash for a couple of years as well. So yeah, not a whole lot else to say, but I think it's going to be a lovely top. It's a well-written pattern. Um, and, you know, there have been a couple of little things that testers have, picked up, testers have picked up on, but overall it's great and the test group is lovely. And um, yeah, Samantha makes lovely patterns. I knit her Salty Air Tea last year. She has now come out with a Salty Air Sweater. I think I showed you a couple of episodes ago uh, Dark Omen yarns that I'd gotten in Barcelona, and I think that that yarn is going to go towards the saltier sweater because it's got the exact same gauge that I'm getting with that yarn. So I think it's going to be a perfect match, and it'll be a beautiful, beautiful yarn to use with that sweater. And um, yeah, and it's so funny because after making the saltier tea, I had thought, this would be really nice as a little sweater in the, for the winter. And now she's come up with a DK version, sort of a DK light worsted version. Um, I could see myself making a fingering weight sweater out of um, the salty or tea pattern as well and just adding sleeves onto it. So anyway, that's that. Next, next work in progress uh, is probably going to get ripped out. Um, I'm continuing on the theme of socks for my team and I got this um, Patton's Croy yarn in this colorway which is 572010. I'm not 100% sure what the colorway is. I don't know how they do their colors here. Which is knitting up beautifully. Isn't that gorgeous? However, I'm knitting this on 2.25 millimeter needles. <laughs> My friend Sue of the Distant Stitches had the exact same problem recently. I'm finding this, it's making a little bit of an intense fabric. So I'm sort of on the, I just started the heel flap and I'm kind of thinking that I might start over with looser needles and less stitches or bigger needles with a looser fabric and, le and less stitches because I am finding this to be a little bit intense so I'm undecided I might start because I got a second ball I might start a sock on larger needles see how I like that and then decide uh, once I've gone down the leg a little bit about what to do with it because it is it is rather dense this is more uh, this is a thick thick fingering I would say a heavier fingering weight yarn but the colors are beautiful that are coming out and will be perfect for the person that I have in mind. So this is also a little work in progress. This is a pouch I made years ago and it's just, it doesn't have any interfacing, so it's very, very pliable. And the last work in progress I have to, for you today is this one here, which is in this bag that my friend Amnina made for me. And it is the <clears throat> Late Bloomer Sweater. This is a pattern by Heidi Kiermeyer. I'll, I'll put a picture here. I was going to show you this pattern here, but I'll just put a picture. This is a colorwork sweater. And I had shown you this yarn from Sonder. Um, I have a sweater quantity of this. I had originally bought this to make a DRK everyday sweater. But then I somehow ended up with a ball of this colorway. This is Sunday morning kind of love. This is matinee and, oops. And, and this ball. 
So in deciding on a colorwork sweater for these, I ended up deciding that I thought with the black, it would be nice to have something quite graphic. And I decided on the Late Bloomer by Heidi Kiermeyer. I've only just started it, so I don't have a whole lot to show you. But here it is. I was wondering if the purple is just too low of a contrast, but I think I'm going to like it in the end. I went on Ravelry as I was having a moment of indecision. I went on Ravelry and I saw these two versions. So I saw this version here where the person has used kind of a pink yarn with all black flowers and the little uh, detail between the flowers. But then I saw this version, which is kind of like mine, where the little details are in a lighter color and the flowers are in a darker color. And I thought, you know what, I actually like that more. So even though I was having some second thoughts about this, I thought I am just going to continue because I think that in the end, I think it'll be an interesting combination. And hopefully one that will look good on me. Um, it's a little different uh, in terms of coloring than I'm used to. Uh, I don't wear a lot of black. It's not a color that I gravitate towards. I don't think black is a great color for me. Um, but this kind of a sort of, it's got a bit of a charcoaliness to it, I think is, is better for me. And so, yeah, so I'm going to continue with this. I do uh, have to prioritize the test knit and I can't seem to put the lento down. So I think I'll finish the lento, but I'm definitely enjoying the color work, definitely enjoying working with this yarn. This is beautiful, beautiful yarn from Sonder uh, Yarn Company. Um, this is the Sunday Morning DK, and it, I believe this is on the original base, not the Ecru base. Um, in fact, I think I bought this. There was no Ecru base at the time, um, and yeah. A very different kind of color combination for me but I'm really really enjoying it and just really enjoying working with the yarn. I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles so that is a seven I believe and um, yeah I'm not very good with all these metric and I just mix it all up metric and imperial um, So those are my works in progress for today. I received a, some lovely gifts this last month, so I'm gonna share some of those with you and a couple of my purchases as well. So one gift I received is quite something in a way because I was chatting with my friend Kate, who's in Ireland, who has the Hawthorne Cottage Craft podcast. And I was telling her that I have some of my father's tweed jackets. My father passed away in 2018, but he had some Harris tweed jackets and I kept them thinking that I would cut them up and turn them into something. Like I'd love to make a bag. And I was saying to her, I'd love to make one because they're they're all, they're, the jackets are all charcoal-y colored, very sort of simple charcoal kind of uh, Harris tweed. I said, I'd love to make like a tote bag with like a bright pocket. She happened to be going to the Donegal studio where they do weave uh, lovely fabrics. And I said, if you happen to see any like bright pink or bright green or bright blue bits of tweed, you know, could you get me a piece? So she said there was one piece of fabric in a bright color. And so she picked it up. Perfect size for a pocket, nothing more. And uh, so she sent this to me in a lovely package. I'm very excited. Uh, so I really do need to take my father's jackets out and start um, taking them apart and turning them into something that I can use. I also, so thank you so much for that, Kate. And at the same time, I received this lovely gift from Mecca of a Skeins of Dreams podcast. Mecca was in India and and brought back some beautiful organic cotton fabric. Not just some, like a whole whack of it. I think there's three or 3.5 meters of fabric in here in this beautiful block print. 
So this is definitely not something that I'm going to make uh, something out of immediately because I have no idea what I should make with this. I do think it would make a lovely, lovely dress uh, of some kind. So we'll have to see um, what this becomes. I want to wash it first because I'm sure it's going to need it. So thank you for that, Mecca. So beautiful. So the other magazine, uh, or the other gift that I got is from um, Rosalind, who is an Ottawa knitter and was at the Ottawa Knitting Guild. Uh, it was the second time meeting her and she brought me this magazine from Lang Yarns. It's using a base, uh, all the patterns in here are using a base called Orion, which is a rather chunky weight looking at, um, Musling free uh, virgin wool and 12% nylon and there are 270 meters to 100 grams. So it's kind of like a sport weight, but I think because it's quite light and airy, it tends to knit up um, a little bit chunkier, but it is a magazine with all patterns with that yarn. So thank you for that, Rosalind. She also donated two skeins, which will be for the podcast in this beautiful bright turquoise color from um, Spud and Chloe. This is the, the fine sock. It is an 80% uh, wool and 20% silk. So there's enough there for something more than socks, but I think it's, it's, it's just beautiful. So thank you for that, Rosalind. I also got myself this magazine by Sadness Garn. I had been wanting to get this and didn't think that I would be able to find it. Um, a couple of podcasters have talked about this, Inga of Knitting Traditions, and I believe Amy of And So On. I mean, sorry, Lisa of And So On. Um, why was I thinking Amy? Was I thinking Amy Palco? I don't think Amy Palco has this, but... Um, I believe those are the two that I have mentioned it, perhaps somebody else. And, oh, it's because there's an Amy slipover. That's where I'm getting things mixed up. That uh, Inga has made a couple of times. Um, that's this beautiful slipover. And I just thought this could be a really interesting experiment. Um, and there were just some really lovely, lovely patterns. And one that I like a lot is this one. It's a yoked sweater that is knit in mohair. So it creates a very light fabric, um, a little bit transparent. And I just thought that was really beautiful. Uh, it's using tin silk mohair from Sadness Garn, and which I just thought is really beautiful. It's got a couple of dresses. It's got this sort of simple raglan sweater in it that is striped. Um, here is one of the dresses. So yeah, just, it's it's got some simple knits. I really, really like this raglan sweater, which is made out of their uh, bursted alpaca. So I ended up finding that at a local shop called Wool Time. I was in there, I was like, oh, look at that. Um, so I got that. I couldn't help myself. And then at the end of the podcast, you're going to see a little bit of a vlog from my trip to Montreal. And the only thing I bought in Montreal uh, at the Boutique Les Garçons, which you're going to see and hear more about at the end, is this Alpaca One by Isayer. This is a lace weight alpaca in this kind of heathered brown colorway. And actually Max added um, a progress keeper by Les Garçons. And I knew that I wanted to get this to go with some oatmeal holst garn that I have. This is a tiny bit darker. I realized when I came home, but I'm going to swatch and see what it looks like. I also have some Plotu Lopian oatmeal that I could also double strand it with. But I was originally thinking of double stranding this with the holst to make the Ilya sweater by Orlan Suk. Um, I haven't tried to swatch yet, but um, that is a sweater that I'd very much like to make this year. 
Um, and I'd very much like to use my Dark Omen yarns that I mentioned earlier with the Salty Air Tea. So we'll see if those, if, uh, you know, if the spirit moves me to knit those this year, but that's that's uh, certainly one thing that I've been thinking about. And um, this just feels like a beautiful alpaca lace weight. I think it would make a lovely fabric. I had thought about making the Ilya only in holst garn, but I wondered if it would be just a little bit too transparent. So I'm gonna swatch with this and we'll see what I conclude. But this is such a beautiful yarn, it could be used for something else as well if I changed my mind. But that's my intention with this. And I had such a joy going to Montreal. And uh, <clears throat> you'll see the vlog at the end. Um, I didn't record my entire day, but I shared it up to the yarn stores with you. And then I wanted to just mention some patterns that came into my life in this last month actually because I didn't podcast last weekend I went to Montreal and then we went to a sugar bush on the Sunday I just had a busy weekend so I wasn't able to podcast so I waited till this week I've got three patterns that I wanted to share with you today one is the Riptide Slipover uh, by JST Design and Designs and this was a lovely gift uh, which from Cindy, who is a viewer of the podcast. So thank you so much, Cindy. Um, this is a lovely slipover knit in DK yarn, um, and it comes in 10 sizes. So very inclusive that way. And um, it has some lovely versions on, on Ravelry. So I'm contemplating what yarns to use with this one. I also got the Coastland Cowl by Annina Yuti which is also here. Um, and honestly, it's such a lovely cowl. Now I've mentioned before, I'm not a big cowl person, but when I saw Leanne's version, Leanne from the Nitty Stew podcast, I was like, that just looks like a great little fashion piece, <laughs> in addition to serving a purpose of being warm. So I have a skein left from, actually a skein in a little bit, left from my granite cardigan in that blue gray yarn that I had used for that. Um, and so I, I'm thinking about using that to make a coastland cowl. This comes, it's knit in Aran weight. So I think that's the right weight of yarn because it is a good, a good solid worsted weight yarn. And this, it actually comes in two sizes. So I'm going to have to figure out which one to make. I might just copy Leanne. And then the last gift uh, that I received this month that I wanted to share are these honey and nectar socks uh, designed by my Yarny Corner. And it's a pair of socks that comes in three sizes and it's got this lovely detail around around the foot, I mean, around the, the leg of the sock. And this was a gift from Sue. So thank you very much, Sue. Um, yeah, so three patterns that I just wanted to share with you. So I'm going to leave it there today. Um, I do have so many good things to mention, but I think what I'll do is leave them for next time. And I will leave you with the vlog from Montreal, from my day trip to Montreal. And I visited two new shops on that day, two really lovely, very different shops, which was really great. Um, one is Les Garçons, uh, the Boutique Les Garçons, which is by... Um, the dyers behind Les Garçons Yarns, Max and Vincent, they opened up a shop in the building where they dye their yarn. And the other one is um, a yarn shop that is was opened about a year and a half ago uh, by uh, the people behind Les Biscott Yarns. In fact, they have three lines of yarn and they opened up this shop, uh, which is called Boutique de Tricot Les Laines Biscott. It's a bit of a long name. Uh, and uh, they are, uh, they're not, they, they're far enough from one another that you wouldn't be able to walk from one to the other, but they're both on the plateau in Montreal. And uh, so, yeah, I went to Montreal specifically to go and see a dance performance, which I did see later in the evening, and it was great. Um, it was called Message in a Bottle, and it was a dance performance that was very representational. It was actually telling a story of uh, displacement, a family of people who are 
uh, displaced and sort of the idea of being a refugee or, and having to leave, being in custody for a while and then forging a new reality. And the choreography was very hip hop based. It was by Sarah Pike, who's a UK um, hip hop choreographer, but it was all based on Sting's music. If you've been around, you might know that I have a thing for Sting. I do love his music. And I saw him in concert last September and I'd seen the police many times. And, well, not I'd seen the police once and Sting many times. Anyway, it was really, it was a really great show. I, at the very beginning, I thought, am I gonna like this? But in the end, I really did. It was a lot of fun. And it was just really ingenious how they wove this story using different songs by Sting. It was recorded music, some of it with his voice, but some of it with other voices. And um, it was actually a really, really great show. So that was the reason I went to Montreal. But I decided to take you with me and go to these new shops that I, well, they're new. Um, although Biscot, the Biscot shop had been open for a year and a half, I, I hadn't been there. So it was really great to visit these two shops. And uh, so I'm going to leave you with that. And I'll leave all the good things that I wanted to talk about. Um, the movies and some you know, other performances that I saw, music and so forth. I'll leave that for next time. So I hope you enjoy the vlog if you stick around. It's been lovely spending some time with you. Remember that the show notes are down below and if you're interested in uh, checking out the New Mexico retreat or the workshop that I'm going to give with the Ottawa Knitting Guild, you'll find the links below as well as all the other stuff. See you next time. Take care. Hello there. Just want to share my day in Montreal with you. I have come to Montreal actually on a little bit of a little bit of a day trip for myself. Um, coming to see a dance performance uh, that's happening at the Place des Arts here in Montreal. It's actually a dance performance that is set to music by Sting. So um, I'm just going to be seeing that tonight, but I thought I would come in early and uh, have lunch and then hit a couple of yarn stores that I've never been to before. Uh, one of them is a very recent open uh, by Les Garçons, Max and Vincent. You may know Maxime Cyr as the designer and Vincent as the yarn dyer behind Les Garçons. I think actually they're probably both involved and they've opened up a yarn store which is not too far from here. So I'm going to have lunch and then I'll probably head over there and then I wanted to head over also to the Biscotte yarn shop which is a yarn shop that I've never been to and I think it's been open for a couple of years I think I could be wrong about that I'll have to tell you more about that later so I thought I'd take you along with me on this little journey I guess I could call it. I just wanted to let you know what I had because it probably looked a little strange. I had a, it's an Iranian restaurant and they do scrambled eggs that are scrambled with different things and I had mine with feta cheese and dill. They make their own bread so I had lovely lovely home baked bread with a carrot orange jam which is a very traditional Iranian jam that I love and I've actually made myself but this time I, um, oh, I haven't made it in a long time but I ordered that this time, but they have beautiful homemade jams 
and bread and lovely tea. So that was that. I'm going to head to Les Garçons. I'll see you there. with Max. Hi. Hello, Max. Um, this is Max and Vincent's new store. And you were just telling me that your dye studio is upstairs. Yeah, so we dye upstairs all the yarn that is on the wall there. Yeah. And we've opened only two months ago uh, when the local, the, the, the space was available. Like right. The yarn store is one of our dream to have. Yeah. Online shopping is fun, but when you get to actually squeeze the yarn, it's even yeah. better. So that's why we went for it. So tell me, how did you decide what to stock in your shop? I mean, obviously that is a wall of your beautiful yes. yarn, right? Uh, we know we wanted to do like uh, something different where like treat it as a boutique. So we have like really curated uh, brand that we like, and it's mostly people we know and we work with. So for example, Le Bien Aimé from Emmy. I've worked with it often, so I'm able to really sell it because I know exactly how it behaves and what would be the perfect project for it. Same thing with Gartner and Walcott and Brooklyn Tweed. So it's all brands that we're really familiar with. Okay, well, I'm going to enjoy looking around. Thank you. You're welcome. That was a lovely, lovely, lovely experience. It was very nice to meet Vincent and Max of Les Garçons, and their shop is truly, truly beautiful. It's only been open for two months. They stocked it beautifully, obviously a lot with their own yarns, but they also have, as Max shared, yarns by other companies who they've worked with and whose yarns they really like. Um, they had Issiger yarns, they had La Bien Aimée, um, they had Garthenor, Toft, just a beautiful selection. So if you're ever in Montreal, I think you should check it out. It's on Marianne, it's in a great area of the city, lots going on there, um, on the plateau as it's called. So just really beautiful, it was really lovely. So let's go off to the next shop, uh, which is um, Les Laines Biscotte, and uh, check that out. So Biscotte is started by the Biscotte Yarns, which is a wife and husband duo, 
but the wife then has this other yarn that I'm going to show you in a moment, and the husband has another line. So they actually have three lines of yarn. Super interesting. <music> by this one here. They have a sample in the window. This is a beautiful, very light and airy texture. It's just gorgeous. Do I do it? Do I not do it? Do I do it? Do I not do it? <laughs> this is an alpaca and cotton blend. That's just really interesting. I don't know that I'll buy it this time, but I think I'm going to keep this in my mind for the future. Well, that was very, very interesting, I have to say. Very different kind of shop than Les Garçons. This is a shop where you will find, um, in addition to their house brands, the Louise Robert, the Patrick, and the Biscotte, you'll find um, some good uh, standard brands like Rowan, um, Cascade, Drops, and other yarns. They had some really interesting ones. I really loved that Jadifra Laura. I'm going to write it down in my little notebook, but I didn't buy it this time. I think there will be another time for that. Um, I am trying to be as careful as possible these days and just buying what I need. And um, as I told you, um, the the Issiger that I bought will go with the holes, so that's really great. Yeah, so that was my shopping experience here in Montreal uh, for today. It was really nice to visit two new shops, new to me. Um, as I said, Le Garçon is only two months old, but this Biscotte store, which is here on Saint Laurent in an area called Myland, it's only been open for about a year and a half. So these are two new shops to explore here in Montreal. And if you're not from Montreal and you come to Montreal, it's also a way to see another part of the city. Montreal is such a great urban city with so much going on in every part of the city. So definitely two shops to visit. I wouldn't say they're walking distance from one another, unless you really love walking, but they're not far from one another and they're both in the core of the city. So I hope you've enjoyed yarn shopping with me today.
Thank you.